there's, there's so much more that you could build. There's so much more that you could make with mostly just dollar store supplies. Let's go get some more. Whoa. If you don't have any kind of saws, I've done this with thinner popsicle sticks, but let's see if it works. Ooh, not bad. Nice. Sanding block. Haha. <laughs> there we go. Two very super smooth little what they call a marquee shape. Now if you don't have a drill, making a hole in them is a tiny bit harder, but not too hard. You just want to be careful. You don't want to get too close to the point or it'll splinter, but you don't want to go too far down because then the jump ring won't be able to reach it. And if you're patient and slow so you don't slip and hurt yourself, this is a basic steak knife and we're just going to put the point right down in there and give it little turns, little turns. Just like that, till we work out the little splintery pieces. Be patient, you don't want to slip, cut, stab. Just little turns, careful. Look at that, already popped through. Now you take it on this side, you find the same hole and you start doing the same thing. You don't need a big hole, just enough to get your jump ring in. Light pressure, you don't want to put so much pressure, you could slip. If you have a wood burner, this makes really nice etched lines, but I'm showing you how you can do this even without a wood burner. And you can get a good wood burner for just 20 bucks. It's basically a soldering iron with a chisel tip that you can burn lines into wood with. But in place of that, this looks pretty good too. I'm actually biting into the wood with the pencil though. I'm pressing hard enough carefully to actually bite down into the wood so there's an indentation because that makes it look better. You don't want to push too hard that you splinter the wood. And you also want to make sure you go straight. If you're not coming from a place of very stable movement, the pencil will go crooked and curvy. What I'm doing is trying to make each line a little different at a different angle so no two lines are completely parallel. And I'm going gentle till I get the angle I want and then I go harder.
Now I'm going over the lines with a thin ink pen to make them extra dark. But I don't want to damage the ink pen by pressing, that's why the indentations I did with the actual pencil first. Now you can use watercolor or poster paints for these. Doesn't matter, but whichever one, you want to thin the paint out because you're kind of staining the wood, not just painting it. The tray is nice here because we're going to mix some colors. This water's already dirty from the last video, which is good because I want these colors to be kind of muted and not as bright. Make a nice tan. So we want to mix orange, yellow, get a lot of water on there, or some black. I think I'm just going to go for the poster paints because I can mix them much faster. Except they're all bright colors, so it's kind of a trade-off. These all came from the dollar store, just a buck each. And you got a lot of paint in there. It's way cheaper per amount than getting it at an art store, and it's basically the same stuff. All right, I'm going to try this stuff. Put a little bit of yellow on here. You know, I don't like mixing on here. I changed my mind. Paper plates are where it's at. Paper plate kind of grabs the paint, so that's nice. All right, so we got some yellow mixed with that icky water, and we need a tan, so... Really, if you mix all the colors, you're going to get some kind of icky purple-brown. And then you just lighten it up with some white, and there's your different browns and tans. Like that. All right. Yeah, I'm moving back to these paints now. Look what I'm doing. I'm a mess. The tiniest bit of blue. That's going to make it green, but like an icky green. That's what we want. We'll figure it out. Ooh. It's a nice, kind of a nice green. Ooh, I like that green. I'm going to use that. Ooh, I like that. All right. So that's going to be our first one. Just carefully. And I'm just picking different sections. I want about four colors. So I'm just gonna paint each side. The, each color will get about two sections per side. And I'm trying not to have the sections touch each other as much as possible. Paint the edges too. The edges are not gonna match, that's okay. And you're not gonna be perfect. One side might have more green, one side might have more tan or whatever. And you might want to put more than one coat. You know, just play with it. Have fun. Paint is for fun. Like, don't ever stress about paint. Just keep mixing and mixing and having fun. Worst comes to worst, you can take a piece of tissue and wipe this off while it's still wet. If that doesn't work, you can paint over it with a thicker layer once it's dry. So don't stress. You're really not going to mess up. We're going for like a Southwest look. Arizona, Nevada, New Mexico look. And I blot it because I like it to stain the wood. I don't want it to like be too thick. I want to see a little bit of the wood grain. Look, I'm going over the edge. Oh no, oh no, look at that. Oh no, I smeared it even worse. Oh, look at me, I'm making a mess. See, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You just keep having fun. White is always your friend. If you're gonna do any kind of painting, make sure you have a lot of white. Black is not as necessary. You can use black, but Black overpowers everything. White, you need to lighten stuff a lot. I'm just going to my regular paints now because fun. Notice I didn't even clean my brush. Cleaning your brush is fine if you want, but if you don't, sometimes it picks up the character of the other colors and it makes stuff a little more interesting. It's kind of like when you have peas and mashed potatoes and corn and different kinds of food on your plate. And that's all fine if they're separate, but if you kind of mix them together, sometimes it tastes even better or more interesting. Once these colors are blended, I might say, mm, I like that needs a little more red, that needs a little more green, that needs a little more brown, and I might go back and paint over them, who knows. Also use your paper towel to like blot if you get too much water. You can also do this with markers, which gives you more precision. Here's the black beads I got from the other video where I went to the dollar store. And I'm gonna take my sanding block. Regular sandpaper would work better, but this is what we have, so. Let's try to find the most coarse side. It's actually a sanding sponge. So that way I'm getting flat, faceted sides on here. I was hoping that I could turn this round bead into a cool faceted shape like that, 
but the best I was able to do was get four flat sides on it. So I kind of squared it, made little kind of squares on the sides, which is still cool. If you're able to get all the facets in there, I'm sure it's possible. You just need to be way more patient than I am. But if anybody wants to try it, go for it. I'm happy with these four sides. I think that's kind of cool. I'm gonna put one color of the paint that I was using for the other pieces on each side. Now I showed you last time how you can just take some paper clips and strip them with your cutters very easily. And then you get this nice black gunmetal wire that's about 20 gauge, but it's pretty strong. Or you can just use regular non-coated, non-colored paper clips that are silver or whatever. But for these pieces, I'm gonna use my favorite wire, which is antique copper, and this is 18 gauge. 18 or 20 will work. I want to touch these colors up a little bit, so. I was kind of showing you guys the sloppy version, but when I really get into this, I get pretty precise. So like I said, you can go over these as much as you need. You can even blend the colors if you like, make them blend from one color to another. It's all kinds of fun stuff. I got these much wider, but also thinner this way. Popsicle sticks last time I was at the dollar store. 